Hello everybody, welcome to another live coding session, this time a scheduled uh, one week later than the previous one, so I'm pretty happy, happy about that. Uh, so we will be continuing basically on the same thing that we started last time, or actually it was started a long time ago, but we restarted last, last time, and that's the Android keyboard and remote TV control support. So. Uh, just to review what we did last time, we had a lot of problems with uh, the uh, phone's phone link application which crashed my PC successfully, but today it's working, apparently it was some kind of uh, driver uh, issue with Nvidia, so now it seems to be working quite reliably, so hopefully that will stay that way. I have my keyboard connected already, so I can uh, press keys on my secondary keyboard to tap between things on the device, which is nice. So that uh, will allow me to actually test the focus navigation and these things. So that's good. And uh, yes, so from the code side of things, we started on the implementation of proper key handling on Android uh, by removing uh, the built-in implementation that we had for uh, on key press all the all the UI elements or actually framework elements and then we moved that logic into well actually we didn't have to do, make any changes it seems uh, regarding uh, the existing UI element routed event implementation it just started working because we removed that uh, override that uh, prevented any key events from actually happening uh, in a real uh, UI element key down handler. So, so far, so good. Things are moving in the right direction. So we'll resume from there and try to move things forward. So the thing that I want to try now that my uh, device is properly connected is to see if the focus navigation using tab and shift tab it will be working and if not then how what we have to do to actually enable that feature so that we can navigate between elements using tab and shift tab which is like the most basic way of uh, focus navigation on windows and it should work the same way on android so that's my goal today right So let's wait for uh, the build on Android to finish. I uh, will just do this in a quick, quickly. So
Okay. Okay, that's it. So let's see, is the build finished yet? No, not yet. Good. Hopefully this time the Which uh, stream is working as well, hopefully. I think I fixed the issue by lowering the bitrate, which was too high for uh, Twitch to handle. Hopefully this will work today. And yeah, so far the surface uh, phone link is working, so hopefully it will stay this way today. During the whole duration of the stream. <laughs> Let me just jump here. Oh, let's kill this stream. Uh, let me see one thing. Is there any news on the Uno platform block yet? Not yet. Oh, we'll keep watching the site. So, there should be some news today. So, I'm uh, kind of excited and checking constantly to see if there is some update already or not. So good, uh, deploy has succeeded. So the application should start up any moment now on my device. And we will see if we are able to uh, test the focus navigation. So application, deploy succeeded, but the application didn't launch yet. Not sure why. Is it gonna start or... Well, it deployed but didn't start up. For some reason. Let's try again. Hopefully it's gonna catch up this time. Let's see, uh, samples. No, that's not samples. Right, it's... Yeah, oh, it, I can actually take input from the PC as well. So that's nice. I don't have to use the secondary keyboard because I can do keyboard input from phone link into the device, which is nice. So samples app, I will just run it in the meantime, samples app. It will actually uh, close itself when, when the build is finished, but I can start by testing the keyboard navigation here. Ah, okay. Top is not working, so I will have to use the secondary one. So you can see that the navigation with top is kind of working now, but the thing that's happening there is also that the native, like focus navigation of Android, is is there, which is something that we don't want definitely. And shift tab is not working either, so uh, two problems at once. Right, so the application is actually starting now. Let's see what happens. Should now launch the application on the Android phone and here we go. 
So we should have the sample step here. So what I will do is I will go to a classic focus navigation sample, which is focus, focus cycle. And on this one, we'll set focus on B1 and press tab, which should, okay. So you can see that the jumping of the focus navigation is kind of erratic. It's jumping multiple times on each tab press, which is definitely not intended. So let's see why that's happening. Why is jumping two times? Focus selection. There's a code that should handle the focus interaction. And somewhere here, maybe, let's see. If I press tab, so it's not going here, so it's somewhere else. Application activity Android. So tap. So here, so when key code tab is pressed, is handling tap focus. And the question is if it's gonna be with shift or not. So if I press shift tap, it's not doing anything. Okay, it's doing something. So shift is shift is uh, set. So it's doing that shift tap navigation, but nothing actually occurs on the device. So it's just staying staying on the same location. But I don't understand why it's jumping two times instead of one. So let's go into this code and see what happens if I I'm currently on button B2 and if I press tap it will jump me to somewhere else. So it succeeded false. Okay, so it the, the movement was not successful, which is definitely concerning. Because, okay, so it was, it's uh, triggered twice. Evaluation is unsupported, succeeded false. Right, but it jumped still. So why is that? Hmm. So let's uh, set focus on B1, tap into this. So now we're on B3 and we should see if... So it's, it's very odd, this is very odd, definitely. Uh, let's actually try this. Focus manager has a method that allows you to see that focus has changed. Got focus. So this event is raised whenever something got focus. So I will find the code that's running this, invoking this. So there are actually multiple places, uh, which is not a problem that much, but just need to check all of them. And uh, now that we are on B3, when we tap, we should jump. Okay, I was wrong here. So let's see, tap once, it should be on B3. And now we're, okay, it was, it happened two times. So if I press tap now, we are here first due to this. Okay, so, mm, right. I need to put the breakpoint here because that's, Actually, I'll put it here. Hello, Dominic. How are you doing? So my goal here is to figure out why it's jumping two times, but I have the breakpoint. Uh, so we're now on B5, and if I press tap, we are here due to dispatch key event, which is Okay, so there's application activity 
race event that goes to somewhere here and uno focus input handler is handling it interesting how did it get here No, oh, okay, so this is handling the root visual key down event because we are now supporting the key down events properly on Android or semi properly. It means that the root visual is now handling it the same way as uh, Skia or WebAssembly is doing. So that handles it first and then it gets handled by the application activity dispatch event. So we have like now two different, two different things that are handling the key events. So that explains why it's jumping two times. So we can actually fix this quite easily. Uh, let's see first. This should be called from, yes. So it's called from the root visual, which is the top down visual of the whole visual tree. So this is this happens here. So it ha it's handling uh, shift navigation, tap navigation, up and down and left and right. So that's nice. And we can then safely, or well, almost safely remove this whole thing from the application activity because it's already handled by the root visual. So if I remove this, well, I can actually remove it completely. I, I think it's, it's safe. We should be able to see if uh, the tap navigation is working by virtue of the visual itself. Right, Dominic. Uh, okay, so you're on a root, uh, on a check, uh, how, how do you call it? Road tour, something like that. <laughs> so driving around. So how is uh, the Expos going? Do you have enough people coming uh, to do expo stand and stuff? I'm doing pretty well. So, yeah, uh, today was very Uno focused day. I, I actually uh, moved a lot with the WebView 2 implementation in Uno and hopefully it will soon be available. Uh, actually, we're, we have a, I have a PR open for it already, but it's not yet finished, but it's 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 uh, going forward nicely, and it's already fifteen thousand lines of code, so it's <laughs> kind of a lot of, a lot of things changing. Ah, roadshow, right, roadshow, that's the right name. <laughs> oh, I see there is a there is a failing test here. I don't like that. Hmm. So. Tests, okay. Hmm, it seems that maybe uh, just failed. The build just failed accidentally, this one. Ah, it seems like a flaky test. So, it shouldn't be too concerning. All right, so uh, now we have the application running again. I will go to my focus. Right, let me remove this for now. Focus, focus cycle, set on B1 and tap. Okay, so now we are tapping nicely. Shift tap is not working, so we need to figure out why. So shift tap, why is it not working? So root visual should handle the shift press somewhere. Okay, so it's not here. Oh, it's in the uh, Uno Focus input handler, and here should we we should get here the shift press. So original key is none. All right, so it seems the shift key is not registered correctly here. It should be here. So the virtual key is none. So it seems the translation from key code is not uh, supporting shift correctly. 
Yeah, it's, it's not actually. It's it's not. Let's fix it. Okay, so it seems the Rocho is going well. That's nice. <laughs> you must be exhausted after the whole day uh, at the booth, right? <laughs> Shift left. So we are supporting shift now. There were some other buttons, right? There was the system navigation up, down and right and left. So system navigation, no, it's not there. So we need to support it as well. The code system navigation down. Up system navigation up right okay right and left right so uh, let's see up down right and left left and right whatever the order doesn't matter so we have these uh, d-pad we need to support uh, the gamepad navigation so we need also key code d-pad up what was that d-pad is also up left up right so it's a diagonal orientations but we need this one so this is d-pad up S D pad. There's no remote, right? No. It's also, so uh, remote controls will be mapped to uh, gamepad, which is fine, probably. So leap it down. Left and leave that right. So that we have the simple navigation using gamepad and uh, Android TV remote, which we will also test later. Uh, these ones. Is there some up arrow uh, or something like that? Key code up. No. Key code. So we don't have these handled yet, but that's mostly key code shift. Ah, something went wrong here. Right. Better. So now up. So there is page up, volume up, thumbs up, page up, we can probably, yeah, it's, it's already handled. All right, so we have probably the main things handled, I guess. Okay, so let's try to run the application again to see where we are at. So, yeah. Let's do it. Let's run it. So this is the original code, I'm just checking uh, D-pad up and system navigation up, Bo both are now mapping correctly to virtual key up or virtual key D-pad up, although that's a good observation here probably, 
I don't think the D-pad navigation is handled here properly. Hmm. It doesn't seem so. So it's there is this get navigation direction for keyboard arrow, but not for D-pad. Let's let's actually add it while we're at it already. So uh, so if it's uh, key up is key up or virtual key D, uh, game pad D pad up. This is a very interesting uh, syntax that you can use with uh, enums in C sharp 10 or 11. I'm not sure which version introduced it, but it's pretty cool because it, it reads like uh, normal English and it's so it's the pattern matching approach. left and finally this one so this handles all those directions and it also needs to be handled in here to actually get there so Game pad up. Game pad down. Game. Oh, and actually we can we can use the same syntax here, I think. So let's is and let's do it like this. Or So do we get, ah, that's not a very good suggestion by copilot. Down or left or right or virtual key, gamepad, right. That handles all of those options. So now let's remove this and we should be golden. Okay, so that is it. And now let's run it again on Android. With this, we should be able to see the navigation going left and right and see the focus visual moving with uh, the, the focus uh, focused element properly. <clears throat> so far no crash from the uh, phone link so that's, that's very nice much bigger success than last time so in the meantime let's see if this is working well so this was cancelled because it was running too long which is fine we can restart it later <clears throat> Okay, it probably succeeded, but it again didn't launch the application on on the device. I'm not sure why it's happening. It's just uh, kind of random. Sometimes it launches, sometimes it doesn't. It seems like a Visual Studio bug or something. Let's 
try it again. Okay. All right. Let's actually, in the meantime, let's see what happened here. Uh, this PR is enabling our test suit of runtime tests uh, to run against uh, Uno Islands, which is a feature that allows you to embed Uno platform content into existing WPF applications, which is pretty useful, which because it allows you to modernize those WPF applications by embedding uh, the modern fluent style UI from Uno platform and actually use other features of Uno platform as well. So it's like uh, Uno inside of WPF kind of thing. But there are some runtime tests which are failing and often for incorrect reasons because they are failing not due to the fact that they are actually buggy, but because those tests were not built to support like uh, multiple ZAML roots situation, which is what's happening here. So while I'm waiting for the build, so I can actually maybe start fixing those failing tests as well. Okay, so let's open our phone link and let's put focus on on the focus cycle. So let's focus on B1 and tap. Okay, you can see that now the tabbing is working. Shift tab is working as well. And the arrows are working too. So that's nice. So this is now functional. And it should now work for as well on the Android remote, so we'll we'll test that as well. Uh, what I don't like here is that we are getting still the native Android focus uh, highlight. You can see it's kind of highlighting those elements which are focused, and that's not what's supposed to happen. So I will need to investigate how to remove this highlight because that uh, kind of breaks the design. Especially if we are probably in the dark theme, I would say that's gonna be even worse. Here we... Oh, it's not visible. But yeah, I, I suppose it's it could break designs in some cases, so I, I really don't like it here. So we will have to fix that as well, but yeah, this is an important feature that's now working properly and that's really great. Okay, so let's try just to see if the Android TV emulator is going to work well with this as well. And I will uh, actually push this because this is an important uh, change so uh, handle focus keyboard events in okay that's it so now uh, the emulator is here. It should have the controls somewhere. Yes. Nice. So we have the emulator running and I will go to focus management as focus cycle. Put the focus on B1 and let's press the arrow. And nice. Cool. This works. This is pretty nice. So you can see that it now handles the focus correctly and doesn't skip elements which is exactly what wasn't working uh, last time so at least this part is now 
properly handled. I can see that pressing this doesn't do anything, which probably should. And I can see I just closed the application, but uh, let's see, apps. Why don't I see the application here? Ah, because it's not registering as... Uh, there is some special registration that needs to happen for the application to show up in the list of applications on Android TV. So we'll have to look into that as well. But now let's let's see about how to handle these two buttons. So the back button, which should uh, go through the same uh, event handling as the system navigation back. So system navigation manager is to type that's handling it. It's Windows UI core. I'm interested if this is available in WinUI as well. Yeah. Okay, so there's no Windows. System navigation manager in WinNap SDK. Uh, probably not. So it's gonna be uh, gonna have to be a Uno specific API, but that's fine. I'll just try it here. So, uh, so when the back button on the remote is pressed, we should get the back requested event here, and that happens here. So in Android, it's uh, executing by the back pressed method and maybe it's already handled by the Android TV remote automatically so let's see it in action and as for the key events uh, those should be handled virtual key here but here so we need to see what what it translates to as a button okay succeeded and again it didn't launch the application so definitely this is uh, some kind of Visual Studio bug because it happens quite regularly let's try this I guess so, it seems that it's uh, there since the latest version, which is 17.5. Oh, when it worked last in, I guess, 17.4. So, 
so uh, here we have the application running again and I will go to focus focus cycle whoa what happened we have uh, some breakpoint no what happened there hmm okay so it just didn't refresh so now to, okay I press deeper down several times which is okay, but now I want to see what happens if I press the back button. So, oh, okay, so the application terminated without me getting anything. I'm not sure. So we need to handle this button differently, apparently. So, Android TV back button handling. Oh, this is key down, but... Android team might have it differently. Oh, thank you for the nice hoodie uh, compliment. It's, uh, yeah, it's a nice one. <laughs> I think you have one too as well. <laughs> so, back button. we do handle the back pressed dispatcher and that's actually should uh, it actually should uh, go into this method so I am not sure why it shouldn't handle that properly let's try it again maybe it just crashed the emulator but it should certainly be able to handle it breakpoint here as well just we have it uh, covered so the application activity is derived from native page which is base activity derived which has base activity events back press dispatcher I mean, on back pressed is exactly what we are on to here. Ah, again, the first deploy failed. Well, failed, succeeded, but didn't deploy. Second one then. Yes, I agree. So it, it seems like uh, seems that the chat, uh, chat GPT implementation on Bank is telling me the same thing that uh, on back pressed should be enough to handle the back button on Android TV. So let's see if that's actually the case. Application starting up. Let's refresh this. Ah, no news yet. So, let's see it now. So, the directional pad. Let's see. Yeah, I will just try uh, this. 
Okay, nothing yet. Let me... Oh, of course I pressed this and then handled all of that. Many breakpoints. Okay, I maybe clicked one too many times. <laughs> Okay, that, that crashed, definitely, but... Ah, I didn't catch the... Oh, right, so there is... Some error here. Because I, I'm, I'm not sure why it's... I wait, why it keeps crashing here. Network stream. So if there is some error in ADB client. Interesting. No. This is very similar to what I'm seeing. But this is happening often, so I, I think I will also just report this. Because it seems like an exception directly in ADB client, which means that something is wrong on the Visual Studio side instead of our site. Hopefully it's going to be enough for them to figure out the problem. Okay. Submit. All right, so second uh, bug in Visual Studio reported in a uh, 47 minutes, so uh, we are on a roll here. <laughs> okay, so so I will go back to the emulator again. Let's try it this time without any breakpoints. What I'm trying to see if the back button is handled or not. If I'm not mistaken, it should go here in the application activity on a back. Oh, what happened here? Ah, okay. So something already failing here. Back rest here. Yes. So this one. So application launching again. Let's see. Um, I 
there's some, there has to be some kind of manifest change that needs to be done to uh, support an application on Android TV. Ah, there's some kind of processing error, so probably the, the exception that happened in ADB broke the Visual Studio instance, so I will just restart it. It's, yeah. So, we need to declare a TV activity to have the application on the TV launcher. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly what's happening is if you don't add the category, it's not gonna show up in the TV device application list. So that's what's happening here. We have it without that intent and then it's not showing up. So I will fix it first before I launch the application. So here in a category I will have to add Android content intent category lean back launcher. So this time we should see it in the list of applications. So we should be able to launch the, the application manually, which will allow us to test the back button even if it crashes, I think, because there is some sample that's already handling back button. System navigation. Hardware backpack then yes. Enable. Failed processing? What is happening here? Uh, there's some kind of error, maybe some kind of left out binary file in there. Let me just delete these two. Okay. 800 megabytes, not that small, and rebuild the sample app. Yeah, apparently, like the stability of of uh, like C sharp debugging on Android and iOS is still not there yet. I I, I think the developer experience. In Visual Studio should be better and it is one of the factors that are keeping developers from de uh, developing mobile applications in .NET because it's just not that stable uh, or at least not as stable as it should be and as a result people are just coming to other uh, solutions for software uh, like application development like Flutter like React because they have the developer experience more dialed and more stable and that's that's a sad thing definitely it would be helpful and uh, useful for microsoft to focus on stabilization and uh, providing better developer experience on mobile devices and for mobile development even if it meant that they would not deliver any like new features to Maui for uh, like several months, it would definitely significantly help uh, get more developers and retain existing developers in, in uh, 
like mobile development world so that's just my two cents on the issue right so now the build has succeeded so hopefully we'll be able to run it on the emulator again Oh, actually we have this thing missing, so maybe it's not gonna show up yet on the home screen. Oh, whatever. We'll do that next time. But for now... Yeah, it's not there yet. Oh, it's deploying. Maybe it's gonna show up. Start debugging. Let's see. Okay, the application is running now, and we will go to focus, focus cycle. So we're handling things properly now. And now let's press the back button. And that goes into this patch key event first. Okay, so the back button is translated to none, which is, I guess, fine. But... Okay, so it didn't get handled by the key, like this patch key event on Android. That's interesting. Huh. So the back button is handled here, but not in the application activity for a reason. Well, we can definitely add support for it here. That's fine. Oh, what happened? Key code and back. Ah, why is it adding this namespace here? Namespace key back, virtual key back. So this is back button, right? Or go back. Hmm. Virtual key back. back back key or button and go back is go back key or button hmm <laughs> great I'm not really sure which is which well hmm so which one I should map it to As for now, it's, let's do it as back, but let's mark it as to do. Be go back. And we need to understand if, why the handling doesn't go into application activity. Because it should according to documentation. TV 
controllers, handle disconnects. <coughs> Ah, okay. So maybe here is the <coughs> crux of the issue. So the back button has a key code button B or key code back. So both are both of these are potentially both mean the same thing. And yeah, so designing backend up navigation. Let's go but to do these two. No. Uh, let's try something like this GitHub and search everywhere for this. I would like to find some kind of uh, Android TV application that supports a TV. Yes, this is Android TV application. And, oh, just close it. So, I want to say, uh, I want to see if it, how it handles the key back, uh, like back event. So this one on back press handle on back pressed. So this is in a fragment. Hmm. So it's back press callback. Right. But the key code button B was somewhere else as well. Here in the custom playback overlay. So it seems they are handling uh, the same thing in two places. One in the key listener and one in the uh, back button callback. Huh, this is interesting. I'm not very really sure how to handle this, if we should handle it in here or somewhere else. So this is this is the dispatch key event that handles all the key events in the application. But it, sh it shouldn't handle the back event. It should still go to the go back handler. Back rest. It should still get here, but it doesn't. Deprecated members? Oh, what does it mean? What is deprecated here? Hmm. Is this deprecated? Ah, okay, okay. So that explains it. So this approach is not supported anymore, officially, and it should use this instead. Okay. So that explains why we're not getting that callback at all. Hmm. 
Okay, so, so we have a bug that is not really related to uh, what we are doing right now, but we can still fix it while we're at it. So, let's see. Application is running. The back button should be handled right here and it's handled true. Not sure by what, but it's handled true. So now the application is not a closing, but it's it shouldn't be handled. It's actually not handled properly. So let's uh, put this on hold a little bit. The application is still not showing up, but let's put this here. Oh, let's do it like this. Uh, and what we'll do is that we will check out master and implement the back button handling properly on the master branch first and then we will make a PR for it which is because it's a kind of a small feature that is necessary anyway for the whole for any Android application on Uno so so let's see back pressed Android I'll go into source we're on Android 13, so we can launch this and let's see how to implement it. Priority, so there, there can be a priority set. Priority default is zero. Overlay is like top level. Mm -hmm. So higher priority callbacks are invoked before lower priority ones. All right, so uh, instead of back pressed, on back pressed, we need to handle this differently now. So this can be removed. This base activity is kind of generated class, so we'll have to see how that's happening here in this TT file. So on back pressed. Oh, actually we cannot really remove that method completely, right? Ah. unfortunate we cannot remove it because it's a public API which cannot be removed as it is we need to just implement it as a side thing as a side uh, another solution for the same thing at least before any breaking changes uh, are performed so But this is in the base class, which is 
here. Hmm. What channel is this? I don't understand which part of the code is generating this uh, handler. So maybe it's just uh, completely automated. So yeah, for the event itself, it generates this method which overrides that uh, method in the base class and then handles it in the activity level. So I guess that's that's fine. You can keep it there, it's just not gonna be handled at all. And instead we will handle it ourselves in uh, the application activity. So here the application activity will register the back handler and how it's going to be happening. It's on back invoke callback. Let's see actually, uh, maybe Maui has this already implemented so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We'll just a little bit steal from open source. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Huh. Enable back on back in worth callback. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not no longer supported and you need to support this is so differently so So this should be happening only on Android 13 and higher. Which is actually uh, correct because the Android TV was running 13. So it means that it vo it, it needed that support for back in vote callback. Yeah, but we are using Android X, which, which means it should be should be fine. Yeah, so we need this. So we stopped intercepting back events via on back pressed. We have done that, and we need to do uh, we did we don't have this. We need this. So the title guidance it should be here. So on back pressed dispatcher.
on back pressed or back invoked? There are two different things. On on back pressed is better versus on back invoked. So back invoked callback. Uh, I still understand the difference between back invoked and back pressed. That's uh, the same thing. Back invoked. So this is on a window. Hmm. Ah, let's, let's try the back pressed. Seems like the proper one here. So register. No. What? How do they do that? So on back pressed, on get the back pressed, the one on the back press call back, add call back. Okay, so add call back. Call back. On back press call back. On back press call back. So I'll create a handler for this one. Yeah, okay. I need to generate that method. Okay, okay, so so it's a class, so it has to be a class. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a class. On back press call back. Mm-hmm. So we need a back pressed callback class. Let's see if we can find the solution, uh, like a ready-made solution in uh, Xamarin, because that would be nicer. Uh, let's see, GitHub, search for get pressed dispatcher in code, but in C sharp. Yeah, so, so it seems that uh, people are also doing like this. So creating a callback as a class and then passing it in. Question is when to dispose it. Hmm. That doesn't, doesn't seem like it's getting disposed ever. So it's just probably there. <laughs> Because it's, the, the activity is running for the whole life cycle of the application, so it's probably fine if it's not actually disposed anymore. Yeah, so we can take something like this. Here. So we take the application, ah, let's make it nicer, I'll put it in application activity, 
back pressed Android. Class partial. So this will be just uh, the file that will handle backpressed events overall. So handle it, handle on backpressed, and we then array erase the method that handles back event so remove this so this method is shared i will put it here so add callback i will put the instance here so back pressed now let's remove it and rename it to back pressed callback here and then back pressed callback so this callback will be raised when the event occurs and we just create it here so back press callback with this and add the callback inside all right so hopefully this will be enough and now the handler itself should happen here interesting there is no like no way to indicate if the back press was handled or not Hmm. Huh, interesting. There should be some kind of way to indicate if you handled or didn't handle the back press. But it doesn't seem so. Hmm. That is odd. How do you navigate that uh, issue? I'm not sure how to navigate how to let the system know that we didn't handle
handling it's not handling the back press it's very weird hmm. okay maybe it's just that you have to call the base uh, base implementation if you don't handle it so let's try that so the original implementation was like this it's it's similar to what we have had been uh, doing before so maybe it that's it so handle on back pressed let's see okay so there's no how oh, it's, it's abstract hmm so how does this work how do you indicate that it's possible to handle it oh it's enabled true So now you cannot indicate that you will not handle it. Yeah, that's very interesting. I don't see a way to let the system know that you didn't handle the back navigation and you need the system to take over. So you can set enable to false. But if you already are registered, I'm not sure if you can set it as not enabled during the handling. This is very tricky.
I'm not really sure how to do this. Yeah, it is. Yes, exactly what, what I want. Yes. Okay, so when you get a call back, you need to handle the press button there. Ah! We have to control exactly when it's enabled or not, but we cannot do that here. Because we... Our... Current approach relies on you being able to... Decide on that when the system back manager is executed. I gotta say, this is gonna be a tricky one, I think. Because how do you handle this properly? I don't really see. Like, for now, the on back pressed handling is working but it seems that it's gonna be shouldn't be yeah it seems like this will not be working in the future and that means we will have a big problem on our hands because we will need a different way to handle this And as such, we will need to give the developer a way to register a back handler or like enable or disable the handling manually when required. But that's definitely not going to be the same as the API that's available right now in in Uno. Well, this is something I don't I'm not sure if I will be able to implement today because it seems like uh, there is no way to let the user, like the API does not give you a way to not handle it. Once you register for the callback, you have to handle it and there is no other way and it will not fall back on the OS behavior if you fail to handle the back button. So the, the application would then basically become 
not closable, which is not what we want. So this is very, very tricky. So either way, if even if we don't implement this, no, let's, let's actually try this. Let's see if it gets here if we press the back button on the TV. Just to verify if it actually does what we expected. So this is a very unpleasant change in the Android API, I guess. Because with uh, the system navigation manager in Windows does not really have this behavior. All it does is raises the event when back is requested and you can decide if you want to handle it or not. And then based on that, the system will either close the application or, or, or not. But in this new approach on Android, the only thing that we can essentially do would be to uh, create some separate API specifically for Android where you would say, I want uh, to handle back button or I do want, don't want to handle it and based on that the back navigation would be handled or not. So it would be a specific API specifically for Android and it wouldn't it, it wouldn't work the same way as on, as on Windows. Like theoretically we could build this API on top of the system navigation manager so we could have it available for UWP where you could uh, implement it using this new API and in the background it would use system navigation manager and actually go the same route maybe. But it means a bigger change that I expected definitely. So this is, I thought this would be a simple change where you would just set the call callback and then handle it or not handle it, but apparently that, that's not the case. So let's run the application again, it because didn't succeed. So let's, uh, so anyways. We found a big issue that we need to look into. And I will make an issue for it on Uno. Actually, if it's not already in, uh, created, no.
Actually, this could be a good thing because if WinEPSDK does not have a system navigation manager, we could provide kind of a replacement for it uh, for Uno platform applications, which would handle the back button in our way via the same API as on Android, but via a different API than system navigation manager. So technically it might not be a bad thing. It just uh, needs more investigation. The application is running, so I'll press the back button and we are getting the back pressed event here. So apparently, yes, the handling goes through this path and it does not go through the application activity uh, back pressed at all. But it would be interesting to see if uh, press uh, key dispatch key event if this is handled first because then we could technically handle the key event first and then enable and disable based on the result there so if I press this the key event is handled first and then the back press so Technically, theoretically, it could be done this way, where we first handle key press event, where we uh, trigger system navigation manager, and based on the result there, we either close or not close the application. So I will add this as a note here. Uh, Application activity dispatch key event. but it's not going to be able to handle the back gesture probably. So it's uh, just a note for the investigation later, but this is a kind of interesting finding. So we need definitely, we definitely need to look into this. So let's uh, stash this for now. We'll continue with this later or in some other session, but let's go back to our keyboard handling and just do one more thing here. And let's see if we can make the application show up in the list of applications. So Android TV. Only launcher. Uh, getting started. So just to see if we can uh, make it appear so that we next time have the application showing up there, which would be nice. uses feature so this needs to be there so use this feature so we probably declare it in the Android manifest or assembly info use this feature is it use this feature yes so assembly uses feature 
and the name of it is Android Software Leanback. False. And touch screen is not required. Yes. And we must provide a home screen banner image to for each localization. So this is banner, driver banner. Yeah, this is it. And we can put it here. Yes. So I will put it here instead of there. Where is the icon used? Ah, okay. So let's do tribal So three hundred twenty and one hundred eighty. Uh let's download a Uno platform logo. I go uh, it's probably fine maybe this one so <laughs> uh, let's download this one for now uh, it's SVG Let's download some P PNG one. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So let's save the image. And let's resize it to the right size. So resize pictures. Custom. Uh, let's just see what the size is here. 320 and 180. Oh, this is definitely not the right size. Ah, okay, so it didn't stretch it. Orientation, there's some kind of hmm. I want free twenty. Maybe this free twenty one ID. Good, good, good. So banner. I'll put this here into trouble and I will use it like this. So that means we should now see the application. Oh, this is optional probably so let's see if this helps
and these animated backgrounds on, on Bing are very nice. <laughs> you can enable them here. I'm not sure if you know about that. Not everyone knows, It's, but it's worth it. So it should be maybe here. Uh, it's kind of by uh, animated. Hmm. It was somewhere here, that option. Maybe it's now enabled by default. Well, it's possible. Yeah, maybe it's now by default. Uh, previously, it was like a choice between a video and a picture. Maybe that's changed now. It's video by default. So are we building? Yes. I think it. So deploying to Android TV. And if we're lucky, then we should see it in the app lists of applications. Deploy succeeded. Oh, it's not there yet. Apps, see all apps. Installed apps, not yet. Ah, deploy succeeded, but it's not showing up. Try again. Apps, see all apps. Oh, sample set is now there. Open. Okay. So the app is there, but it's not showing up in the list of applications yet. For some reason. So what's missing there? Well, uninstall it. That will, that, that will force refresh. Well, again, deploy succeeded. Right, so the application is Installed again, but it's still not in the list of apps. That is so odd. So many weird things in Android. Okay, so Android TV app not in list of apps. Let's see if Google will help. Doesn't seem like to fix.
now. So the banner is there. Enjoyable, so I don't see that as a problem. Let's see the recommendation again. So, drawable banner. That seems fine to me. Drawable banner. Those features are there. Okay, I don't see the reason why the application is sh not showing here. It's not clear to me. And it's not even here, which is super weird. It should be there. Sample set, it's listed under... Under system apps for a reason so weird well maybe uh, let's do one thing I will launch a completely different application on the device we'll see if that happens to be to do to be doing the same thing uh, let's actually do it simple simply without uno at all android android app a single view app let's do it android 13 so this activity should be should support the leanback launcher this oh maybe that's the problem can there be two of those Oh, maybe that's the problem. Can you have multiple of these? Intent filter should be action main. Ah, okay. Action main. And maybe it means that we need to have both uh, launcher and lean back launcher here. Like this. 
Yes. So that might be actually it. Let's run it. So for the main action, you want category launcher and category lean back launcher. Before it was for action view, which is something else. It's for sharing, I guess, or something like that. I'm, I don't remember, but I think that could be it. So let's have fingers crossed this works. I hope it will. Let's hope. I really do hope it works. At least something could work on Android, right? So it's deploying, which doesn't really mean it's deploying sometimes, as we saw today. But it's deploying, blah, blah, blah. Come on, work. Work, work, work. So deploy succeeded. Ah, okay, the application is there, finally. <laughs> Alright, so the app is showing up in the list of applications, which is, which is progress. Uh, the logo is uh, kind of wrong, but I guess that's just some kind of problem with the sizing or something. I don't really care about that right now. The good thing is it's working. So we have now the application properly registered as a application on Android TV, which is first good step forward. All right, so let's push this change for now. Uh, as for the size, maybe I can fix that right now as well, because I think that was the X HDPI, maybe that's the reason. So if I do this, It might show the banner properly sized. So I will do one more try here and then we will end this session and continue next time with uh, some further key down handling. But the good thing is that now we do our, we are handling properly the navigation with focus manager so we are doing tap and shift tap we are doing the arrow keys on the keyboard so uh, very good progress there also we now are handling it in the same way as on skia on WebAssembly. so that's another like big piece of the platform specific code which was there on android removed so yeah overall it was a successful session uh, we found the unfortunate problem with go back uh, handling, which we will need to address some in some way. But even if it's not handled in a you know uh, system way kind of thing, uh, people still can handle the back button manually because you have access to all the native APIs. So it's not a like unsurmountable problem. Yeah, now it's, now it's surrendering the logo properly, so that's good. All right, so I will push my changes for now. So this is okay. All's good. And this is fine, I guess, as well. Even though the layout of the file is not the best it can be, so I will just edit that here. Let's put this here directly. All right. Okay, let's do this. And let's 
do register samples app as Android TV application. All right, that's it. We are done here. So thank you for joining today's live coding session. Uh, we hit several things that we can continue on uh, next time. But in the meantime, keep coding. Have a great uh, week ahead. And I will see you next Monday on another live coding session. All right. Goodbye.